All right, so chi-square test. Um, Google doesn't do it. And you'll notice that if you try, you go chi equals, I said, equals chi-square. And you're like, where did it go? Yeah, it doesn't have one. Okay, so you can monkey around. It. This is not there. Okay, so don't sweat that too much. But it's okay because you have other ways around that. We have what's going in the book. We have, uh, you, you know, you can look them up online. Uh, a variety of ways to get there in all of our calculators, well, not the 83, but most of the calculators will tell you the inverse is 2. And, of course, Excel does, too. But, again, if you come on to here, okay, well, you're like, well, interesting. So, in this deal, of course, we can do this uh, paired t-tests. We can do two sample z-tests and so forth. And we can also do the f-test. Hmm. Let's look at this guy here. Now, notice what it wants is some actual data. So, over here somewhere, let me put in some data from population 1. Oops, that's ridiculous. And here's some population 2. Remember, they don't have to be the same length. That's okay. Not a big deal. And so, if you highlight this, this is from population 1. And then if you highlight this, from population 2. And let's see, I want to know, is there a difference between them? And I don't believe there is a difference between them. 99% of the time, that will be 0. Variable 1 difference, known difference, right? or the known variance. I don't know what it is. How are we going to get that, Jay? Well, I'll show you in a minute. Notice we would click on labels if we knew it. If there was labels up here, like population 1 and population 2, but we don't have them. Okay, so what I want to do is come out here. And I'm going to go equals SD deviation. And you want this one right here. Right. You can tell which one you want. Standard deviation of a sample text of zero. Yeah, here we go. Standard deviation. So you don't want this one because that's population. Population. A standard deviation of a sample. And this is also standard deviation of a sample. This is the one I want. Okay. So it's these guys right here, and I'm just going to drag this over, so I will, oh, actually that's not true, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to type it in again, and the reason I'm just going to type it in again is because I didn't have it highlighted all the way down to there, so it's going to be wrong. So remember, to get the variances, which is what we need, we need to square this mess. If you're doing it this way, and again, you know, like, this is too much work, I'm just going to do it you know, by hand. Knock yourself out, man. And so, this is 2.7857. And this one is 1.788. I do not have labels. And let's say I want the output range. I don't want the output range to be. I want the output range to be over here somewhere, let's say. And I hit OK. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So the question is, was it a two-tail test or was it a one-tail test? So that is, if I said that population, let's say, population one, I thought was greater than population two. If that's what I, if that's what I was testing, that is, is it a one-tail test, then I'd pay attention to this p-value here, 0.07. If I said I think that there is zero difference between these two, I think they're, it's the same or they're different, the two-tailed test, and here I would fail to reject that guy. Okay. Now we will only ever use unequal variances on the t. Okay. And so zero again. You're like, wait, there's not as many options on this one. <laughs> I know. And the reason for that, remember, is because on the t distribution. Oh shoot. Remember on the t distribution, the whole point is you do not know the standard deviation of the population. You just don't know. Okay. That's why they don't ask you for it. And then click out here somewhere. Boom, boom. And so if this was a t-test instead, which by the way, it should have been a t-test because there were fewer than 30. Okay. All I wanted to show you was, is, hey, quickly now, quickly now, how would I go about, you know, figuring this thing out? Okay. And so if this had been a t-test, which again, it should have been a t-test, with a one tail, we would have had a 0.05 p-value here. If it was a two-tail test, 0.17. In either case, you know, fail to reject in the case of a, uh, 
fail to reject in the case of a uh, alpha 0.05. Now I'm going to clear those out and this time I'm going to do an F test. Now remember an F test it's up here somewhere. And the F test remember tests the standard deviations to see if they're in fact the same. Standard deviations or variances remember. So highlight your data. Again if you had labels that's cool. And then the output range, click somewhere, not important. Here's our output range. And again, pay attention. Was it a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test? Pay attention to your... Why aren't you spitting it out? What's wrong with you? Why do you hate me? Hmm. Oh, not H I. I hi, that's a good one, Jay. <laughs> Moron. Hmm. Why aren't you showing up? Hmm. Hmm. Now you're like, have you ever had that happen before, Jay? I have not had that happen before. Do you know what the problem is? I do not know what the problem is. So I'm going to try something here because what I'm thinking may happen, and this is just a complete guess on my part. Again, I don't run every... There it is. In order to do the two sample F test, apparently the, the background information for Google Sheets is insistent on it being simply a... Um, they must be equal size populations. That's the only thing I can figure. And so here it is. And notice it only gives you a one-tailed test. Okay? It only gives a one-tailed test. Again, if you want a two-tailed test, it's two times this p-value. Okay? Um, I personally wouldn't do it that way. Me, personally, I'd just go, hey, let's do equals F inverse, which is F dot, nope, F inverse. Right, I'm going to pause that for a minute. i got to figure that out myself. It's been a while. <laughs> okay, that's right. So, what Google won't do is Google will not give you the F inverse. So, what do I do? Well, I'll tell you what I would do. I would follow the book's advice and take the larger variance divided by the smaller oops the smaller variance and I would get 1.55 okay and so that is what I would do for my F test and then I'm gonna do this as an upper tail test right so I'm gonna do 1 minus F dist of oh shoot of this value oh shoot wait how did you end up out front of this value, okay, and then it wants the two different degrees of freedom. And see right there, it says degrees of freedom for the numerator. So there were nine degrees of freedom for the numerator. For the denominator, there were eight, uh, nine degrees of freedom as well, rather, n minus one as well. Oh shoot, I'm just angry. So it's the value, and then the two different degrees of freedom, okay. And that is going to calculate your p-value. So it's 1 minus that. Okay? That's it. Okay? Boom. 0.7. Okay? 0.7. Now, notice that um, <coughs> that is from here up. Okay? Um, so that's just that's how you would figure that guy out. Now you're like, well, wait a minute. What if... Oh, that the reason this looks a little different is because... The reason it looks a little different than the p-value you got over here is because this was calculated on the first like six or eight of them. So let me fix that. Let's put that back on 10 now. Then they should match up. You're like, what well, doesn't match up, Jay? Well, it kind of does. Remember, you're going from the bottom end all the way up. So it's 68% from here up to there. 
versus the computer is finding, this one is finding from here down because this test was testing it was less than that, so 31% being that lower tail. Okay, so I wouldn't use the. I don't know. To me, Google Sheets is like why? Why are you doing it for the most part? There again, I really like the linear regression programs. I like um, random number generation. I use that all the time. But most of the rest of this stuff, psh, I don't really use much until we get to some of these guys later on. Okay.